Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this series of video, we are going to discuss blistering uh, or bullous diseases of the skin. In this video especially, we will concentrate on bullous pemphigoid. The following are references for this video. The bullous pemphigoid is a common autoimmune blistering disease which has uh, got clinical similarities to the pemphigus vulgaris, but it lacks acantholysis. This disease is almost equally common in both male and female and it affects elderly individuals. The presentation of this disease is variable and the site affected usually are inner aspect of the thigh, flexor surface of the forearm, axillary, groin and lower abdomen. The oral lesions appear after cutaneous lesion and they are present in 10 to, per, 10 to 15 percent of the cases and may present as a articarial plaque and severe pruritus. The course of this bullous pemphigoid is self-limited but chronic and the patient general health condition is uh, usually unaffected. The treatment is by systemic glucocorticoids. The lesion of the bullous pemphigoid are blisters that are tense and filled with clear fluid. Uh, and uh, the base, uh, the skin is uh, appearing erythematous or normal. The size is usually less than 2 cm uh, in diameter but it occasionally can go up to 4 to 8 cm. The, these bully do not rupture easily, then if the, this is not infected, a scar is not formed usually. Uh, these bully are subepidermal and non-acantholytic blisters and the infiltrate is usually superficial and sometimes it is deep perivascular infiltrate and it is composed of lymphocyte and variable number of eosinophil especially these eosinophils are present in early lesions. There is superficial dermal edema and also vacuolization of the basal cell layer. The eosinophils are typically present directly beneath the epidermal basal cell layer. So bullous pemphigoid are associated or characterized by presence of tense bulla and here you can see in this picture there are two bully one is larger and another one is smaller pointed by these arrows and these are common on the flexural regions axilla groin forearm and abdomen or inner so here you can see there are multiple bully present and these are tense bully and some uh, all of these have got erythematous base, but uh, some bully have been ruptured and formed erosions. Uh, the histologically, this photomicrograph is showing that uh, whole of this epidermis is uh, forming the roof of this bulla, and uh, the floor is formed by the edematous papillary dermis. This photomicrograph is showing the histological characteristic of the bullous pemphigoid. The, there is subepidermal blister and this is not showing any acantholysis. So this is a non-acantholytic blister. There is presence of inflammatory infiltrate and edema in the superficial dermis and also there can be presence of uh, this uh, fibrin, this is the pink material marked by this arrow, the fibrin can also be present. The inflammatory infiltrate that is present in bullous pemphigoid can be lymphocyte, eosinophil and neutrophils. And these lesions heal without scarring if not infected. Now we can recall that the antigen for bullous pemphigoid are located within the hemidesmosomes. 
these are uh, there is a bullous pemphigoid antigen one that is uh, uh, 230 kd occludeltan uh, molecular weight and it is connecting this uh, intracellular structural protein with the bullous pemphigoid antigen 2 that is 180 kd uh, protein and it is uh, attaching this tonal filaments or intracellular structures or structural protein or intracellular skeleton with the lamina densa that has uh, that has many molecules of type 4 collagen the bullous pemphigoid is another autoimmune disease blistering disease and uh, in this autoimmune blistering disease the immunoglobulin g are directed against the bullous pemphigoid antigen 2 and uh, as a result the antigen antibody complexes are formed and it result in activation of the complement the membrane attack complex is c5b to c9 and it results in plasma membrane basal cell plasma membrane injury and that will interfere with the elaboration of adherence factor that are secreted normally by the basal keratinocytes the anaphylotoxin that is c3a and c5a will result in mast cell degranulation that will result in release of chemotactic factor and these chemotactic factor will recruit eosinophils neutrophils and lymphocytes the level of interleukin 5 and eotoxins are increased in blister fluid then eosinophil and neutrophil have got uh, various uh, these eosinophil have got eosinophilic peroxidases and major basic protein there is release of proteases, proteases from the mast cell also and neutrophil also release proteases all these will have uh, have got tissue damaging effect and due to this there is terminal dermal epidermal separation within the lamina lucida so this illustration is showing that this this there is the presence of bullous pemphigoid antigen antibody complex <clears throat> and this uh, antigen antibody complex fixes the complement that result in anaphylotoxin activation and there is mast cell degradation and due to mast cell degradation there is a uh, uh, release of ECF, interleukin-5 and eotoxin that recruit eosinophil to this environment and due to eosinophilic uh, recruitment there is eosinophilic degranulation that as a result of substances that are present within the eosinophil they separate this uh, basal layer of the epidermis the basal keratinocyte at the level of lamina lucida and result in subepidermal abscess on immunofluorence these uh, bullous pemphigoid are marked by a presence of the linear deposits at the dermoepidermal junction and uh, ultrastructurally or in electron microscopy the location of this uh, bullous pemphigoid antigen is within the hemidesmosome that attaches the basal keratinocyte to the lamina lucida of the basement membrane zone. So, when these hemidesmosomes are detached, it will result in the blister formation at the level of lamina lucida. This is another photomicrograph showing the immunofluorescence and uh, this uh, immunofluorescence in bullous pemphigoid is exhibiting the presence of linear deposit along the dermoepidermal junction. 